Peace, root folks. It's Montague here. Uh, just wanted to do a quick basics video. Uh, some people are like, yo, you know, I want to do some spiritual work, you know, um, but I don't know where to start, you know. And so, you know, I've been doing this for many years and there are a few basics as far as setting up your uh, your space, you know, to whether it's just a prayer room, uh, whether it's a place where you read people's cards, whether it's a place you go um, and just remember and honor your ancestors, um, whether it's a place you go to just sit and listen to what your ancestors may be saying um, or what your angels may be saying, depending on, on how you define ancestors and angels. Um, it's just... Um, some different folks grew up with different beliefs and um and i honor all those beliefs um but um, i definitely have a method and way of thinking about things um you know a lot of people have often asked me for example you know why are you even dealing with your ancestors you know why are you dealing with your ancestors when you could deal with the source and uh, my answer to that is always, well, it's about proximity, you know? Um, and it's also about um, belief structure, you know? Because in my belief structure, the, sur the source radiates through all things in different ways, you know? And so it's not disrespectful for me to ask my grandma for help because the source is what gives her the power to even communicate with me. Um, that's one reason. And the second thing is proximity. Like, you know, um, as far as source, um, source is usually this idea of some perfect thing floating somewhere far off in the ethers, you know. And for me, source doesn't have to be far away, you know, like, the source can be very close up. For example, a baby, right? The baby in a crib is not depending on Oprah Winfrey to take care of her. She's she's depending on her parents to take care of her. You know what I mean? And our ancestors are like our parents, you know, um, or even better, more like our families. And within those families, um, within families, there's dysfunction, but there's also heroes in our families. You know, and so when you call to your ancestors, you know, understand that the way it's organized when you're honoring your ancestors is very organized. Um, whereas when you say ancestors, you're calling to those who have died on your behalf. Um, those people who came before you to walk this path you know, to guide you. But it's not just any ancestors, you're calling upon the ones that were exemplary. The ones that your guardian angels, the ones that your God um, put in a position to help you the most. That's who you're calling towards. And in working with that ancestral connection, you pray for those who are still learning, for those who didn't get it. You pray for their restoration and their healing and for them to find peace on the other side as well, you know. So, but either way, you know, whether you're calling on God or calling on your ancestors, you know, or calling upon a positive energy, there's certain um, basics uh, that you want to have at your disposal, um, certain tools, certain ways of seeing things. Um, and in, in my practice, the way I look at things is that uh, it all starts with a table. You know, as far as rooms go, as far as places in the house, it all starts with a table. Um, and usually on that table, we, we put a white sheet over it. Why white? Some people say, hey, man, that's racist. It's like, it's not racist. <laughs> We're dealing with energy here, right? And I've never, honestly, I've never met a white person in my life. I've never met a white, white person with skin like this. No, I've met peach people and I've met brown people. 
but never a white person, you know? So this has nothing to do with race. It's about energy. White is the color of transparency. It's the color of complete uh, trust. And it's, it's a color of revelation, like shining light in a room. You know, it comes, it, it, it comes forth to, to bring some sort of definition. And so when you're working with, with white, it's actually a symbol for light, you know? And so, you know, everything has its purpose. Black has its purpose as well. You know, um, I usually use black more defensively, more protection, you know, but usually when you're in a space, a healing space, you're looking for answers, you know, and white is like that answer color, you know? So we wear white on the head, you know, we wear, uh, when we're doing very intense spiritual work to keep the head cool, to keep it, to keep it protected, but also, and as far as a spiritual space, whether it's a table or a little place on the floor, um, you're going to usually use white. Then on top of that, on that white, thing another important thing is fire fire is a beautiful element and um you can just see it look how it dances you know that fire is like that activation principle it's another principle of light and transformation Usually in these healing spaces, we're also working with some sort of transformative goal. And so with that, that white candle, with the, with the flame going on there, it's gonna add energy, it's gonna heat things up. You know, um, not too much, but it's gonna heat them up just right. So you want your, uh, you definitely want your um, fire element there. It's a basic, a basic principle is to have uh, in this healing work, have a white candle. Um, another element, of course, water. Why water? Well, water helps plants grow. It moistens the soil, you know, keeps things in motion as far as like the blood and the constituents within the body. You know, it's that cleanser element but it's also a portal. It's like when you look into water, you see a reflection. And that reflection is symbolic of another world. That is the portal to the other side, is that water. And so working with water and working with fire, you're working with some of the basic elements to peacefully, you know, coming into a spiritual space. The other element, since we have this fire and this water, is earth. You can have earth in that space as well. So a plant is great, roots, roots are good. Uh, sometimes I use an egg. Those are all great elements to represent earth on your table. You want all of the elements, especially the four primary, water, fire, earth. Now the air can be represented two ways. Uh, one of those is the words you speak. That's the air principle. Air is prayer. Another element that uses air is smoke. So smudging. Um, you know, you can use one of these little shells or whatever to start smudging, things like that. Um, smudging means lighting um, some sort of herb or, or something that burns nicely and gives off a good cleansing sort of energetic uh, vibe, along with a scent usually that clears negative energy like Palo Santo, it's a type of wood. But those are the basics. Get those on the altar. You know, once you do that, you've created an altar, a place where sacred entities can come to you safely and start to build with you. Uh, we'll talk more on this. Thank you.